Here we have the perfect example why masking in Lightroom is so important. Let me show you why as we turn this RAW file into this final image. And as always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. So usually for the start of my editing process, I'm going into the basic adjustments and try to balance the exposure of the image. I'm doing this with these tonal sliders right here, which change the image globally. That means if I bring down the highlights, all the highlights in all of the image will be reduced. The problem for this image though is it's kind of split up in two. We have the upper half with the mountains and the sky, which are already quite contrasty. And we do have this river in the foreground. Now, I really don't like the highlights in the sky. Those are a little too bright for my taste. That means I would start by bringing down the highlights. But of course, this will also affect the foreground. And by reducing the highlights, we are reducing the contrast in the foreground, which makes it look worse. So adjusting the highlights globally for this image doesn't make much sense. The same goes for the white balance. The upper half does have a very visible blue color cast. This shot was taken during the late afternoon hour. So the light should be a bit more yellowish. So if I would bring up the temperature to fix the white balance, we would get a neutral white balance, but the river in the foreground starts to look a little bit too muddy. And again, it becomes worse. I want to have a warmer look in the background and a colder look for the water in the foreground. However, this does not mean we shouldn't use any global adjustments at all. What I'm going to do for this image is I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will globally bring up the base saturation of the image because I want this image to be vibrant and colorful in every part of it. I'm also going to slightly bring up the blacks since the darkest parts of the image are kind of too dark for my taste and I want to raise them globally as well making the whole image a little bit brighter this way and giving it a softer look. So let's raise the blacks like this. I think that looks good. Also, I'm going to slightly bring down the overall shadows just to bring back a hint of contrast without affecting the global image too much. But that's it for the global tonal adjustments for this image. What I want to do now is to bring up the texture a bit, giving everything a sharper look. I'm also going to increase the clarity, which will slightly boost the midtones contrast. And since I want to have a subtle dreamy effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze, which will make everything look a bit softer. Okay, finally, let's also bring up the vibrance since I want this image to be colorful. So that's our image after the basic adjustments. We can compare to before, but you can see nothing much has changed except for the base saturation level and we have some brighter shadows. Now I'm going to start targeting different areas of the image with masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And right away, the thing that's bothering me the most about this image is the sky at the moment, because it's just too blue for my taste. I'm going to start with a simple sky selection mask. You see, this mask is far from perfect. We do have some parts of the mountain selected as well, but that's not a big deal. What I want to do with this mask is first, I want to very gently bring up the temperature, removing some of the blue color cast already. Then, as I said in the intro, the sky in this image is a bit too bright. So I want to specifically only target the highlights of the sky and bring them down. And this mask is perfect for this purpose. All I need to do within the sky mask is to simply pull down the highlights a bit. Instantly, this looks much better. We do have a little more detail in those bright white clouds. And now I can continue. I do want to give the sky a little more contrast and I'm doing this usually using a color range mask and I'm targeting a blue part of the sky like this. Of course, we have some more blue tones throughout the image. So we need to make sure to only affect the sky. I'm going to subject a linear gradient and I take out everything except for the very top of the sky like this. And all I need to do now is to simply pull down the exposure to add some more contrast between the blue part of the sky and the clouds. We could even bring down the blacks a bit if we want to push the contrast a little further. All right, nice. Still, the upper part of the image has this very, very visible blue color cast, which makes this whole shot look way too cold. So we need a way to change that. Luckily for us, there are a couple of ways to do that. First off, let's create a new mask. And here we choose Select Landscape. Lightroom will give us a bunch of different options. I'm going to select the mountains right here. 
let's click on create mask. You see, this is a pretty good mask for the purpose of making the background of the image warmer. But I also want to include the sky in this mask. So to do that, I can click on add and choose select sky. And here we have a perfect selection for the upper part of the image. What I'm going to do then is to bring up the temperature a lot, getting rid of that ugly blue color cast. So let's raise it like this. As we bring up the temperature, you can see we got rid of the blue color cast, but instead now we do have some strange purple tones in here. Therefore, I'm going to bring down the tint, thus reducing the purple color cast. Just like that. Instantly it looks much, much better. But I'm still not happy with the colors. So in the upper area right here, I'm going to bring down the saturation a notch just like this. We're going to target these colors later on with color grading, but for now, this is looking fine. What I want to do as well for the background is to make it less contrasty because these mountains are kind of far away and the further away something is in the landscape, the less contrast there is. So we can give it a bit more atmosphere by reducing the contrast. I'm also going to bring up the shadows, further reducing contrast. And let's bring up the whites just to make it a bit brighter, giving this image some more brilliance. All right, that is looking so much better already. Let me just turn off this single mask so we can see the difference from before with that super ugly blue color tone to after. Much better. At this point, I want to introduce some light and some shadow in this image. Therefore, I'm using pre-existing light and shadows and I'm going to enhance that. On the left side, you can see some kind of brighter slope. I want to target this brighter slope and make it even brighter, making it appear as light is hitting this area. So let's see, I'm trying to use a select objects mask here. Make sure to use the rectangle select mode by clicking on this icon because you get better results this way. And now I'm just roughly covering that slope on the left side. That works great. I still want to add a brush and let's just target this area right here. That's looking great. Now all I need to do to make it brighter, obviously just bring up the exposure. And just like that, we can create this awesome looking light effect. I can also bring up the whites, further bringing out some brightness in here. I also want the brighter areas of the landscape to have some more warmth and some more saturation. So I'm going to bring up the temperature and I'm going to bring up the saturation to make the highlights a bit more intense this way. All right, that is looking beautiful. I want to do the same on the right side. So let's use another objects mask. And again, there's a brighter slope right here. I hope Lightroom will detect it. It kind of does. Let's add another select objects mask right away and try to clean it up. That's not working as intended. I'm going to use the brush here and I just try to manually select the brighter part of the slope. I think that should work. Again, I'm bringing up the exposure to make it brighter. And thus we're creating some light in this area. Beautiful. You can also bring up the temperature again and the saturation to fit the light on the other side. Actually, I do think I want to further improve the left side. Let me use another objects mask and target this part again. At the moment, this area is a little bit flat with the same light level over the whole hill. I want to change that. So I'm going to intersect this mask by clicking on those three dots, intersect mask with, and here I'm choosing the brush. Now with this brush, I'm just targeting the upper part of that slope right here. I want this area to specifically be a bit brighter, giving this whole thing a bit more depth this way. So let's pump up the exposure so you can see what I mean. All right, that's looking super, super good. Then let's see, I want to use yet another objects mask. This time I'm targeting the brighter part of the mountain in the back on the right side. Let's see if this works. It does, beautiful. Now you see there's still a bit of mountain which we haven't selected. I'm using a brush to add this to our mask. I'm going to roughly brush over the sky because now all I need to do is to subtract a sky mask and we get this perfect selection right here. 
So since we are working on a part of the mountain that is further away from us, I'm going to make this brighter by reducing contrast. So we can use the global contrast slider and bring it down. And by reducing the contrast in this area, we are making it brighter. I can further brighten it up by bringing up the shadows. And let me also increase the whites. Okay, and again, I'm going to bring up the temperature to match the light of the other scenes we have, of the other areas we have just created. Okay, nice. Of course, we not only can target the highlights of a scene, we can also target the shadows. And again, I'm going to use a select objects mask. Let's see if this one will detect the shadows right here. It won't, but that's not a big deal. Let's click on add. I'm going to use a column range mask and I'm clicking somewhere here in the shadows. Of course, right out of the gate, and this will select way more than needed. So I'm going to bring down the refine tool. So we're making sure to only select the shadows. I can also subtract with a brush, cleaning up everything that I don't want to have selected within this mask. So that's looking good. To make those shadows a little bit deeper, I'm going to bring down the exposure. And that's all I need to do in here. Perfect. Now the upper half of the image looks pretty good to me at this point, but we still need to work on the water. So let's create a new mask and we're going to choose select landscape. Here we're going to choose water and then click create mask. So with this mask, we can do quite a lot of cool things. What I like to do with rivers and waterfalls like these is to go down into the effects menu and play around with texture and clarity. So as I bring up the texture, we will get way more structure in the water, making it look much better in my opinion. I'm also going to pump up the clarity, which will make it look much nicer as well. I kind of want to go crazy with something around 30. Let's go with this. Then I want the water to look way more vibrant. I'm going to bring up the saturation for that. So we have some nice rich blue tones in the foreground of the scene, but I think those blue tones are a bit too strong still. So I'm going to very gently bring up the temperature. So we can reduce the blue tones a little bit without losing saturation. And again, I have a feeling there's a bit too much of a magenta color cast in here. So I'm going to bring down the tint to fix that. I think that looks much, much better. All right, and then I do want to make the whole body of water right here a bit brighter. I'm going to bring up the whites for that Nicely improving the contrast. Uh, actually, let's bring it up all the way. That looks really good. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the exposure just a notch. So by bringing down the exposure, we made the highlights darker, but also the darker areas of the water. So this gives, and this gives us a very nice look, I think. Also, I feel like we can add a bit more contrast by bringing down the shadows like this. All right. I do want to target this particular mini waterfall right here in the foreground. So I'm going to use a radial gradient covering it. Maybe like this. Here I just want to bring up the whites, making this point a bit more interesting. I'm also going to increase the clarity a notch like this. Perfect. And finally, one more thing I want to do. I really like this rock right here. So I'm using another objects mask and let's draw a rectangle around that rock. Let's add a brush to really make the selection clean. Okay, what I want to do is to bring up the shadows. I'm also going to slightly bring up the blacks. And let's raise the temperature to make the colors of the rock a bit more intense. And let's also raise the texture to give this some extra detail. Wonderful. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. We basically treated those two portions of the image completely different with the upper part where we have introduced a lot more light, a lot more temperature and saturation against the lower part with the river, giving it this stronger blue color cast. That's why masking is so important and helpful in treating different areas of the image and creating more pleasing edits this way. But now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. And we're going to start in the color mixer tab. First off, with the hue, I want to change the hue of some of these color tones a bit. First off, I want to bring down the blue hue, turning the river in the foreground and the blue part of the sky more into a cyan color tone. 
so somewhere around here i just i really don't want to overdo it also i'm going to bring down the green hue just a little bit making the green tones of the image appear warmer and i'm also going to bring down the yellow hue like this nice then let's go over into the saturation tab i want to boost the main colors of the image that means i'm going to bring up the orange saturation as well as the yellow saturation let's also bring up the greens and i want to bring up aqua for the river in the foreground of course actually i want to bring down the blue saturation just a notch to balance things a bit better but that's looking good. I'm also going to head into the luminance tab to change the brightness of these color tones. So we can bring up the green luminance, adding a bit more brightness to them. I'm also going to bring up the yellow luminance and we can bring down the blue luminance, further adding some contrast to this shot. Beautiful. So that's almost it. Just one more thing. I'm gonna go down into the calibration tab as always for my images. What I like to do is to bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation. That's it for the color grading. Now let's go into the details tab for a bit of sharpening. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, then hold down the Alt key while we adjust the masking slider so we can nicely target the landscape like this and bring up the amount of sharpening. And there it is, that's the finished image. And let me know what you think about these masking techniques. Again, if you have questions left, make sure to ask in the comments. I will gladly answer them and thank you so much for watching this video.